Hi, this video is going to be about applying classical test theory part one. So specifically starting with the item scale analysis. Before we can go into this, I need a quick reminder of correlation. We can have no correlation, we can have low, high correlation. Both of these, this blue and this green in the middle are positive correlations. And the same here, these are all positive correlations. We can have negative correlations that are also very strong, but it has to do with how how are things grouping together? How is the variance grouping together? This is done with Pearson's coefficients, ranges from one to negative one. And again, we're estimating the size of the correlation. This is incredibly important for everything that we talk about with item analysis. You will notice that a moderate relationship is a 0.4 or above, and a strong relationship sits right about that 0.7 seven area. We're going to come back to those, but keep that in mind as we go. We can also look at a strength of relationship, so we can do the R squared, and that's how much of the variance um, is shared. So it's this percent of variability in one variable can explain the variation in the other. I also want to remind you about Cronbach's alpha. So this is measuring internal consistency. Essentially what we're doing is saying do the participants answer in a consistent manner or are they just clicking all over the place and it's, there's no rhyme or reason to their answers? And we want them to be answering in a reliable fashion. Here, if it's really, really high stakes, then you might set your alpha at a 0.9 or higher, um, but typically an alpha of a 0.7, we're, we're happy with, um, especially in social sciences. Anything below that, we're really questioning the reliability of the scale. So when we're applying classical test theory, there's kind of two main ideas and there's four questions that we are asking with, within the items in the scale. So first of all, what are good items? And to do this, we're gonna look at the correlation to the whole, and we want a point four or above. And we're also gonna be able to see what items are the easiest and the hardest by comparing mean scores. So items that um, are scoring lower, have a lower mean score are going to be um, easier. When it comes to reliability, are participants answering consistently? This is going to be our Cronbach's alpha. And then we can also look at problematic items um, by checking this alpha if item is deleted. And that's going to essentially rerun the alpha and show you that if we didn't have this item, is it going to increase or decrease our overall reliability? So we're looking at good items here meaning they're correlated to the whole, and we're also looking at kind of good items here and saying, is our scale reliable with this item? It's possible that everybody's answering really consistently except this one item, they're not answering consistently, in which case it's probably an item wording issue um, that you could check out. We can also look at scale, but with classical test theory, we're assuming that the scale is correct. So if you had a one to four scale, we're assuming that everything is being used appropriately. You should check to make sure that all of the choices, one, two, three, and four, are at least being used, um, but this tends to just be assumed. When we get into SBSS, this is going to be analyzed scale reliability analysis. We're going to check a bunch of things and then see how it goes. So when we're in SBSS, it is under analyze scale reliability analysis. Put in all of the chosen items that you want. I highly recommend using variable names instead of labels in this case. We go to statistics, make sure everything's checked, continue, okay. Let's look through some output. So first of all, this is just showing you what has been processed. So we have 120 persons that took this survey and we have some that were excluded. Um, this was list-wise deletion. You could do pairwise, but typically we do list-wise deletion. So if they were missing one answer, they were completely removed. Here's our reliability statistics. So our Combax Alpha is a 0.45, and we have 15 items. That is not a good alpha. That's very problematic. Let's keep that in mind as we go. Here are our mean item statistics. So for each one of these items, this is the mean score. And we can see that for the scale, everybody's kind of between this one and two range. 
If we put these in order, that's how we're going to be able to tell easiest to hardest items. And that the easy to hard depends on your scale and kind of what you would assume the hard idea is and the easy idea is, whether that's green is harder or disagreeing is harder. And that's going to be based on your construct and your scale. We do have item means here, but this table right here is one of our favorites. So for question one, this is our item total correlation. So we have a low correlation at about a point two. This item correlating to the whole construct, fairly low. In fact, if we delete this item, we can raise our alpha to a 0 0.50. And if we look back, our alpha was a 0.45. So we would want to delete that item to get a better alpha. I will say, that when we look through these items, they're not all worded the same way. So we really need to recode these before we run all this analysis. That seems like a no brainer, but you would be shocked at how many people forget to recode. When we recode, in fact, we get an alpha of 0 0.90. So now we have a very acceptable reliability. You'll see that the recoding changed quite a bit the way that they recoded. Um, I believe they standardized all of the items when they recoded. Item mean changed, and now all of our Cronbach alpha, so we'd have to look back. And you can scan through here and see that that first question is still a bit problematic. It's below a 0.4, um, and this one is also below a 0.4, but scanning through it looks much better with 0.4s and 0.5s. Still not great, but at least we're a lot more reliable within that. So let's go back to our questions. Using these charts, go ahead and open up your SPSS file. Pick any of the scales within that gerontology data. And I want you to try to answer these four questions for item analysis and reliability for that scale.